What do we make of Tommy Lloyd's roster building strategy and players on this team? Where we go from there? All of that good stuff. You are Locked On Wildcats, your daily podcast on the Arizona Wildcats. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Thanks for keeping it locked on, Wildcats. I'm your host, Mike Luke. This show is brought to you by Ultimate CFB GM. Check it out. 10% free boost. Use code locked on college in game store. All kinds of good stuff. All right, now we are going to talk Arizona basketball this entire show. We're going to talk about where these play, where we're at with this current Arizona roster, what we're going to do going forward, and a bunch of different stuff. But first, this roster that Tommy Lloyd has coming back this uh, this coming season, I think could be. I think it's certainly his toughest roster. I don't think that there's any doubt about that. Not only do I think it's his toughest roster, I also think that he's a. We're kind of at the point now where you know that. Um, you know, what he needs, what he relies on. And listen, he runs a free-flowing offense. I get all of that. and But you also, I think he also kind of runs into trouble at times with not having enough guys that can make plays off the bounce or that just settle for threes. And maybe a little bit of a lack of toughness. Again, you you know, we're picking nits here because, again, he is a uh, he is a player or he is a coach that obviously gets it. You don't win the amount of games that he does without having an understanding of, uh, uh, of you know, of really what's going on on both sides of the, uh, on, you know, when it comes to recruiting and playing. Now, the first, first thing that I think we need to talk about, though, is where is this roster? Where did they come from? Caleb Love is the best player on the team, obviously. He's a returning All-American, and he's a player that, um, you know, again, I think that uh, will be in consideration for Big 12 Player of the Year, and you know, I think he's going to be at some national award discussions. He's that dude. He's that good. There's, you know, there's really no other way around it. Caleb Love is a fantastic basketball player. Now, obviously a transfer portal guy. Then next to him, Jaden Bradley. I'm a lot bigger on Jaden Bradley than, uh, you know, than other folks are, mainly because he is a, like I said, he is a, um, I think that he is a much better offensive player than people uh, give him credit for. And I also think, too, that defensively, I think he's going to be a little bit of a Jamal Shedd type. And that when I say Jamal Shedd, I give that because, again, I love Jamal Shedd. He is a uh, he's a dude that he's a guy that I think is a one of the more underrated players in college basketball the past. Um, I don't know what. 5, 10, 15 years, and you saw what he was without, uh, what uh, Houston was without him. Uh, Jaden Bradley is that. I think Jaden Bradley can be that. Not only do I think that uh, uh, Jalen Bradley can be that, I think that he is going to be that. Then, at that small forward spot, you got a domestic recruit. That's something that you're going to hear us talk a lot about as well, domestic recruits. With domestic recruits, you also think out that uh, you also look at it and you're like, all right, so, you know, what can they... You know, what, uh, you know, from a high school perspective, what do they really do? Arizona hasn't had a ton of those, and we're going to talk about that, and we're going to talk about that strategy here in a little bit. Then you got Trey Townsend. Trey Townsend is obviously a fantastic basketball player. Not only is he a fantastic ba- basketball player, I think that he is going to be the dude who is a, uh, I think he's going to be. Um, somebody that Arizona really didn't have last year. Again, Keyshaw Johnson was very, very good, but Keyshaw Johnson also offensively was never going to really set the world on fire. That just really wasn't his. Uh, that wasn't really his can of worms. That uh, that's you know that's just not really what he did. Um, Arizona though needed somebody last year that could make some plays. You could get the ball to, and you could say, "All right, we need you to make some plays." I think that Keisha or that uh, Trey Townsend, another transfer, is going to be that dude. And honestly, you saw it against some of the best teams in the country. I think you're going to continue. I think you're going to continue to see it. I really, uh, I really like what uh, what Arizona's got at there at that position. Then Mount Crevis, I'm telling you, Mount Crevis. People keep people keep putting this out there, and I'm not going to argue with it. That Mount Crevis is going to be. A, uh, is going to be in the NBA in a year. Again, 
I don't necessarily see it, but I'm not going to argue with it because people a lot smarter than me are, you know, certainly saying that. So we will see. You've seen some of the highlights. He's obviously looked very, very good. And he's obvious. And, you know, again, when you watch him play, you can totally get it. You understand that this is a uh, this is a different uh, this is a different uh, type of player entirely. And so, again, we will see how this does all play out now. With uh, the uh, on you know coming off the bench, then you got Tobey Awaka, transfer portal player. Um, Arizona's coaching staff believes that he is going to be a starting player. He's going to be a starter the following season, and they believe that he has NBA potential. We will see how that plays out. But again, I'm not going to sit here and dispute that. Then you've also got Carter Bryant, a domestic high school recruit. We're good again. We're going to go on that. A world of potential. Not only does he have a world of potential, he's also also a play he's also a dude that is a uh, he's also a guy who is a I think pretty I think it's pretty clear to say that he is a you know he's going to be a NBA guy at some point so again there's that you've obviously then so you know and then again we can just keep going on and on down the list you got Anthony Del Orso as well also a player who is a uh, you know the coaching staff really really likes out of uh, I was going to say out of a uh, Colgate so again or a Cornell or no uh, Campbell, excuse me. So you got those guys. And the reason we went over that, though, is because I wanted to kind of talk about where we are with Tommy Lloyd and where this roster construction is. And I think that's where uh, I think that's where it's going to be. Um, it's going to be interesting to see how we uh, how this all does play out. Now, the first thing is the first thing is with uh, with this roster is where exactly um where are we when it comes to Tommy Lloyd's three different uh, ways of recruiting? And the first one is the transfer portal. In the transfer portal, there's no doubt about it. This man is a wizard at the transfer portal. And I don't know that there's anybody better in the country than him, honestly, at this stage. With, uh, with um, you know, you look at... Uh, Umar Ballo, you look at uh, Caleb Love, you look at Jaden Bradley, you look at Keisha Johnson, you look at Pella Larson, you look at all of these different dudes, and you I can keep going on and on down the list. He's hit on all of them, and or I can't really think of one that was just a crappy player. And honestly, that's uh, that's something that is a uh, that's something that I think is really really interesting. Um, and you know, again, well, this is not an exact science. A lot of people, a lot of player teams strike out on players. But when you look at it, and again, this stat has been put out there. This stat has been put out there time and time and time again. But it is it is what it is. This is a team that uh, this is a, uh, uh, a a coach that just that just gets it. And he is a you know, and again, he's gotten guys that have been nice fits for what he's tried to do. And you look at Keyshawn Johnson, this guy that averaged seven and five last year, comes here, averages about twelve and six. He's probably going to find his way onto an NBA roster. Uh, Caleb Love, everybody was saying that he couldn't, uh, you know, that he couldn't uh, be that dude. Well, we haven't really, uh, we, he, you know, again, he wasn't great down the stretch. I get all that, but overall, Love has also been very, very good for um, for Arizona. And I think that you're going to see a monster season out of Kevin Love or Kevin Love, Caleb Love. I'm excited to see what he can bring to the table. But overall, um, you kind of get the gist. Umar Ballo, nobody really saw him becoming the player that uh, he did. I thought he would be kind of a Gene Edgerson type. Like I said, you know, come in, throw some bows, and then throw some bows, and then you know, you're you're exiting the game, and it's uh, you know. Just you know, not that, uh, not really that thing. Um, but when it comes to uh, when it comes to the international game, it's been a little bit more and high school. It's been a little bit more hit or miss, and we're going to talk about that. But first, first, Ultimate College Football HC. Download from the App Store or visit ultimate-cfb.com. Here's the deal, and here's why it's so good. You can get an you can get. A 100% free boost. Use code Locked On College Football in the game stores right now, and you will, uh, like I said, you will thank me later on this one. You are going to be very, very happy with this. So the great thing about this is, again, it's very, very simple. Is that 
college football is here we're in week zero and this is there's no better time to hop on this gravy train than right now use or again ultimate college football hc another one you will thank me later on this i guarantee you on that all right we're going to take a quick little break and we're going to come back and we're going to talk about the rest of the recruiting Thanks for keeping it locked on, Wildcats, and making this your first listen of the day. I am your host, Mike Luke. Okay, now let's talk a little bit about let's talk a little bit about where we are now with uh, the roster construction. We just went over about that Tommy Lloyd is an A plus. I mean, heck, even the guys that weren't big time contributors, they still served a very, very distinct role. And that's something that I don't think that you can really minimize. I mean, a Justin Kyer, for example, uh, was never going to be a starter, but came in and he was a very good, he was a very good football or a very good basketball player for the U of A. And, you know, Courtney Ramey, maybe a little bit disappointing, but overall, Ramey, good. So again, we can't really have the, uh, can't really sit here and argue with any of that. But the other areas, though, have been a little bit more problematic. And, you know, let's talk about the international recruiting first. Uh, with the international recruiting, it uh, you, you essentially have had one dude that has been, that is good. And again, that's more of a projection, but I still think that it's fair to say that he is, uh, that he's going to be good. And that's Mount Crevis. Mount Crevis, um, listen, I'm... I, his back to the basket game, I think a lot of people are going to see. His three point shooting, I think people are going to see as well. And I think you're going to see somebody that, uh, if he's not in the NBA this year, he's going to be in the NBA in a couple years. He's just got a lot of ability. Not only does he have a lot of ability, he's also got, he's also the dude who is basically able to just kind of, you know, uh, Get rebounds, and I think you're going to see a much stronger player as well. That's where I'm. That's where I'm kind of at with. Uh, that's where I'm kind of at with that. Now, the thing that I think is going to be really interesting, though, is where are we then when it comes to these other players? Now, some players, in all fairness, in all fairness, some players have left and they've turned out to be good. But for the sake of this argument, it doesn't really matter because I need them to be good here. And if they haven't been good here, then again, that's. Uh, that's basically a zero for me at that point. That's what I need. I need players, I, I need to be able to look at things and say, all right, are they, where are they in the grand scheme of things? Are they, you know, what kind of football players are, or basketball players, excuse me, we got a football preview coming up. What kind of basketball players are they? Adama Ball, another one. Adama Ball has uh, gone off to Santa Clara and he's looked like he might be able to play in the NBA. That one doesn't totally surprise me. I kind of wish that Adama Ball had redshirted at the U of A, but in this day and age, kids aren't going to do that. I get that. Um, I also expect Paulius Morauskas to be very, very good. Um, he is a, I think that he's got, I don't know that he's an NBA player, but I also don't know that he is not an NBA player. He is going to be, I think there's a real chance that he is going to be that dude. Uh, we will see though, obviously. But after that though, it's been kind of a lot of, mm, you know, dudes that are kind of roster filler. I like Philly B. Philly B on this show, we like Philly B. And not only do we like Philly B, we think that uh, he's a good guy. We think he was good for uh, team chemistry. We think he was good for all of that. But the problem though with Philly B is that Philly B just wasn't quite good enough. And I think that's the, uh, um, I think that's kind of, you know, what's that? I think there, and there's some other guys. Philly B was never going to really play here at the U of A. And I think that's something that Tommy Lloyd has got to figure out is where, um, is offering players that are probably not going to be able to play at the U of A. Is that really, you know, and again, Tommy Lloyd has been somebody that has been able to figure this out over the years, but that's also been a little bit of a concern for me. Where is the, um, you know, I guess just basically where where is all of that? Conrad Martinez, I would love to be wrong on Conrad Martinez. I would love to be wrong on Conrad Martinez, but I don't see it. Um, and, you know, if you talk to certain people behind the scenes, they don't see it either. Now, again, Tommy Lloyd likes Conrad Martinez. So at the end of the day, that's pretty much all that matters. Does Con does uh, does Tommy Lloyd like Conrad Mar Martinez? And, yes, he does like Conrad Martinez. But I th still think the question is... Where are you? Uh, where are we then when it comes to um, him ever contributing here? And again, I just don't. I just don't see it. 
I don't see it, and I I could be totally wrong, but I don't see it. I don't think he's good enough. Um, then Henry, Henry Vasar. Um, I had hopes for Henry early on, but I am not at that. Uh, I am not at that stage anymore with uh, with Henry. I just don't see it. I think that uh, you know. I wonder how much he really cares about basketball. But who knows? I mean, we could see it. I just don't know that he's got the. Uh, I just don't know that he's got the toughness or the. Uh, I just don't know that he's got the toughness. I also don't know that he's got the uh, the strength. And I, honestly, I just don't know how badly he wants it. I'm a Dylan Anderson fan, obviously. I wish that Arizona had Dylan Anderson instead of Henry. But, you know, he didn't want to be there. So, again, we will take Henry and we will uh, we'll see what it can all do. Again, like I said, though, I don't really see this one uh, coming to fruition. So again, those are some international dudes that you know just haven't that just haven't really panned out, and either they haven't really panned out, or they haven't been the uh, they haven't been the guys that have been able to uh, really make uh, kind of end, ends meet with this. So we will uh, we'll see how that all does play out. Now, with uh, the uh, you know some of the other players that have you know come that have come through here. You just kind of knew. We'll see. But Tommy Lloyd had that reputation as being a, you know, kind of being that international, uh, and there's been really no international impact players through his first three years. And again, people, you got to understand that this obviously is early, and this isn't an end-all, be-all. I totally get that. But I think that we thought that there would be a little bit more of a dynamic international recruiting aspect to this. There has not been so far. Now, when it comes to dom uh, domestic high school recruiting, that's where this becomes Becomes fascinating for me because the domestic level, I think that you wish that uh, you know that there had been some more hits, but there are some uh, extenuating circumstances which uh, we are going to uh, we're going to break down. The first one is very very simple, in that there have been players like a Joson Sainon who was going to come here, but. He uh, obviously Caleb Love, and he also was kind of pulling Arizona's chain a little bit. We and we told you from day one that you know he probably was not going to come here, but if he did, that would you know you got a commitment from him. Um, then Jamari Phillips, kind of the same way. Now Jamari Phillips had a lot of other issues going on as well, um, but Jamar, I think Jamari Phillips can play basketball. We'll see how it plays out, but that's one where I think it was probably a good uh, way to sidestep for both. Uh, for both uh, both parties, but when it comes to uh, when it comes to uh, the players that have come here, there just there hasn't been that many. I mean, we're in year three, and let's you know let's talk about it. You had a uh, you know in um, you've got uh, one guy who has been a real contributor, at, and I think you know is an easy one to project as a uh, as one going forward, and that is KJ Lewis. KJ Lewis, I think, is going to be a. I think he. I think KJ Lewis is going to play in the NBA. I think KJ Lewis is going to be a All Big Twelve type performer, and I think Arizona is going to be able to win games with KJ Lewis. But, um, you know, and I still, and I think he's going to be in that 13, 14 point per game realm, something like that. But still, my question still stands though when it comes to some of these other players though is that's basically it. And that, I don't know, is uh, really sustainable. Kylan Boswell came in here, and again, this is where it's kind of a mixed bag, and I get all that. But Kylan Boswell, kind of the same thing, in that Kylan Boswell came in here very highly rated, but Kylan Boswell also, and this is to his detriment, and I think to Tommy Lloyd's to a certain degree, is he didn't take it seriously. He was out of shape. He was partying. He was just doing a lot of stuff that does not conduce it for being a great basketball player. And I think making it all more interesting was that his dad was here down here as well and they still allowed this i mean we've all seen the pictures you can just tell by his body type that that looked like beer bloated uh, basketball and but that's also a little bit on tommy lloyd though too because tommy lloyd should have expected a higher standard i'm not a sean miller guy i would take tommy lloyd every single day of the week over him but sean miller would have never allowed that to happen so those are essentially the two guys that you have so we're going to talk about that and what that means going forward but first game time check it out all kinds of really really good stuff at game time the great thing about game time is this is that you can get tickets for concerts you can get tickets for games you can get tickets for anything and you can get them at the last minute very very cool stuff so check it out 
Go to uh, go to uh, download the Game Time app. Use code Locked On College for twenty dollars off your first purchase. Another one of these ones where you will thank me later. The great thing about this too is that with Game Time, you also know that it's been tried, it's been trusted, and many many people have used it. Download the Game Time app today. Use code Locked On College for twenty dollars off your first purchase. Terms do apply. Thanks for keeping it locked on, Wildcats, and making this your first listen of the day. I am your host, Mike Luke. All right, now let's talk a little bit about where we are at with uh, with uh, high school recruiting here. And again, just kind of put put it out there. Just hadn't been good enough, in my opinion. Now again, there has been you know some uh, different circumstances. I understand all of that, but you know eventually, eventually KJ, basically KJ Lewis was your only dude at this point now Carter Bryant i think that you're hoping that Carter Bryant can uh, flip the script a little bit and if Carter Bryant can flip the script then i think that makes it a lot easier for uh, basically everybody involved Carter Bryant's obviously um, a five-star kid. He was a priority recruit for Tommy Lloyd's from day 1 and props on Tommy Lloyd for getting him but now you got to be able to put it all together, and I have no, I have no uh, doubts that he is going to be able to put it all together because Carter Bryant comes from a great family. He comes from a great, uh, you know, just basically an entire, an entire structure of just good stuff. And um, you know, he's smooth. He's able to move. He's able to do a lot of different things. I think his role is going to be a KJ Lewis. Uh, plus type this year for you know for lack of a better term but we will see how that one does play out but overall um you got to have you got to be able to get in my opinion one or two high school kids each year that are able to be contributors i don't think that you can go through three years and essentially have one dude that's been a contributor and I think, again, in this day and age, Lloyd has shown that he can absolutely annihilate the transfer portal, and that is obviously a good thing. But the next step then is going to be able to be, what can you do for me when it comes to uh, domestic high school recruiting? And we're going to find that one out. Um, but he's shown that he can get kids. It's now it's a matter of being able to develop them. And can that be the hall? Can that be a staple to go along with your transfer portal? of where where you're going to be because if you can get that in then i think that you take that next step up from probably being a top 10 to 12 to 15 program under lloyd to really getting squarely in that top five and you're going to need to be able to do that in the big 12 as well again that's not going to be an easy task but somebody has got to do it we will see how that does play out okay now next week we're going to be back with you talking all arizona football it is game week my friends it is time it is here and again and this is going to be a fun one because, you know, with Arizona football, there's high expectations in play. And not only are there high expectations in play, I think you also know, too, that, you know, I don't want to say that this is boom or bust, but I think Arizona's got to be able to take care of business this year. And I think that they've got to be able to put together a very good product. If you put together a good product, then I think everybody is feeling good about it. But, you know, again, uh, Brent Brennan, I think, knows that he's got to win games. And if Brent Brennan uh, wins games, then everybody's going to be happy. But, you know, it's one of those things, you know, you've gotten a lot of different people that are uh, expecting you know Arizona to play well because of the talent that he's got at his disposal a disposal and I think that he should be one of those as well and I think he is but on that note very much appreciate you all making locked on Wildcats your first listen of the day I'm your host Mike Luke and again bear down back the a have a great great weekend and we will talk with you we'll talk with you soon keep it locked on Wildcats